you obviously were 18 when you started making money <laughs> right. and you came from nothing right. to making money. Did you ever stop and think like, wow, I got to make these tough decisions at 21 and 22? Being a, like a, a first generational money maker in the household is a scary thing. And for 18 year old, I go from being sitting in the classrooms in May graduating high school to being a multimillionaire a month later, you know, in June. Say. From when we were kids, I mean, I was thinking about these as I was preparing for this, that we dealt with this on like a high level. All of a sudden we were in this, like, for me it was like, holy shit, now we're in this room and this shit is real. It's not like I had that moment, we were sitting in that room at Reebok and Paul Fireman was very smart. He said to you, you know, I know you're gonna go see Nike and Adidas, but I'm gonna offer you $10 million today if you don't go see them and shake my hand. Right. He offered, he wrote you a $10 million check in that room and you turned it down. I can't say I would have turned it down. I, <laughs> I mean, I think in the room I said, yo, let's take this check and get the hell out of here. But you turned it down. Was it, so what was that th thinking? Do you, do you remember what right. you were thinking and why you did it? Right. I mean, I remember, first of all, it was a, the, one of the longest damn tables I've ever the seen in my life. The longest table, boardroom yeah, table yeah, one ever. one of the longest boardroom tables I've ever seen in my life. And um, I had no idea what he was doing at the other end of the table. I just seen him writing. Yeah. And uh, he was talking, he had his head down, he was making sure he didn't get anything wrong on that, <laughs> on that check. And when he slid it down there and he said, listen, if you take this right now, you know, you just promised me you won't go talk to Nike or Adidas. You know, you can take this right now. And 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 I was I was lost for words at the, at the beginning. I mean, shit, we flew in. I flew in from Akron, Ohio, yeah. from Spring Hill. Spring Hill like, from the projects. From the projects. Yeah. I mean, our rent is like $17 a month. <laughs> exactly. And now I'm looking at a $10 million check. That you can leave with. Yeah, and go to high school and go back to the classroom the next, the day, next day. I was telling people that you were going to homeroom the next morning. I was going to homeroom the next morning. So I'm like, holy shit. That's my first initial thing. And then I, I, for some odd reason, I started thinking, like, if this guy, which is a, he's a great guy too. Smart I still guy. love him to this day. He's Smart an unbelievable guy. guy. But if he's willing to give me a $10 million check right now, what is it to say that Nike or Adidas is not willing to give me 20 or 30, you know, up front, you know, or to say that Maybe the upfront money is not even the biggest thing, you know, maybe let's start thinking about the back end, you know, and, you know, I've always, you know, and that comes from, you know, my uncles as well, just, you know, never put all your eggs in one basket, you know, and give, give it an opportunity, give people an opportunity to, to say what they, what they got to, to pitch themselves. And, you know, we all, we always say, listen, we're going to hear all three companies. We want to hear all three companies, what they have to say. You know what's their plan, and um, I can't. I still can't believe I left that ten. Million I can't million. believe it either. Welcome back, J S and fans, my outlaws, if you will. Get it, outlaw Jersey. Well, anyway, thank you for coming back for the supporters. Um, if you're new here, definitely hit that subscribe, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell. See, one thing I, I like about talking sports is the business part of it. The business is great. Now, if people who have listened to me over the years know I criticize LeBron James a lot because, first off, he sells. <laughs> the streets got to eat. Oh, my God. Right. And... He's a good topic to take. He, he's one of the best in the league, so why not talk about him? See, a lot of the people say, why are you talking about LeBron all the time? You hate No, people don't bark out parked cars. Who am I supposed to talk about? Sean Kemp? He ain't playing no more. So you got to talk about people who is hot. Well, anyway, uh, I don't like a lot of decisions he makes on the court, um, off the court. However, I do like his business moves. And I like this video because he talked about when he was broke living in a projects and he was offered $10 million for his value. And he said, hmm, if someone's interested in paying me $10 million, then I must be worth more. And that's so true. And what they do is uh, when they make this deal, because they know you're worth more 
anybody who says this, they say, all right, look, I'm going to pay you this amount. I don't want you to talk to anybody else. Take the deal or the deal's off the table. That's called the fear of loss. And, and one thing I respect about him is he always have a good team around him. You know, the vultures come out. See, that doesn't happen to everybody because, you know, you have the vultures who want to take your money. And then once you're done, uh, your value goes down, then they leave and go to the next person. It happens a lot in the music industry where they give the 360 deal and you probably hot for one album and they'll put all this money into you. Anytime y'all have a uh, celebration dinner, they charging you um, all the features, all the music. So everybody get their money up front. When they get that lump sum after um, they make those payments, then they pay everybody else. And then the artists get the last little bit of money. That models in the sports arena. There's not a lot of people getting paid like we think they are. Everybody's not rich in the NBA, NFL, etc. It's just the top 10%. If you look at anything in the world, the company that you may be working for right now, it's all about getting to the top 10%. The top 10% or 20% eat. Everybody else, the 80% eat off of 20%. That's just the way it is. Well, anyway, I love sometimes too that you have to make that executive decision to get the money on the back end. Now, that's a lot of times that's hard, especially for people who got families and different things like that. But, you know, if you feel like you're worth more and you can sell the product like he's have been doing since he's been the chosen one, you make way more money on the back end. Bet on yourself. That's what I like about LeBron. And he's making great moves. Uh, there's quite a few people in the NBA who's making money but like I said not everybody's making those deals you have Magic Johnson who made more money outside of basketball than he did within along with Michael Jordan the same way he betted on himself with Nike now he could have been a billionaire a long time ago but he um, when he took that deal maybe if he would have thought about taking more money on the back end he would have been a billionaire way before this time but he made it so shout out to LeBron James Tell me what you think about LeBron James turning down $10 million in high school when his rent was $17 a month with him and his mom um, struggling to be on food stamps and also uh, basically getting kicked out, moving home to home to being blessed uh, with the wealth. If you like this video, definitely hit that like, subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video.